Good evening. Man, it's good to be out in the house of the Lord again today. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to start off in a weird way. And I and I'm going to start off uh, cuz the message hits home for me and it, it's uh Brother Greg preached on several points that I'm going to make tonight. And as a matter of fact, it was great to hear him preach that message this morning because it's, I almost feel like this message is really just a continuation. And it just feels like God has affirmed it in that. So, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell on a preacher if I will because uh, today... He asked me before the service, he said, Hey, do you have plans this evening? Well, I, I did. I actually made plans about a month ago with several uh, members, uh, that I, uh, several friends of mine, and I was planning to have them over. And he said, Well, okay, no problem. <laughs> and then uh, after the service, I literally ran back to him and said, Were you going to ask me to preach tonight? I said, because man, if you were, I'll be here. I told I told my friends even. I said, you know what? <laughs> if you want to join me, I'll be in the house of the Lord tonight. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell on myself there. Um, I say that because I, because we need to be humble uh, about uh, about the Word, and we need to be reverent in the Word. And um, I feel like that's something that's really lost today. And I, I have to tell you, um, I love the music this evening, but a, a few of my favorite hymns were missing. And uh, I want to go through that list with you right now. Um, I didn't hear Joyful, Joyful, We Kind of Like Thee. And I didn't hear About Average is Thy Faithfulness. And matter of fact, Miss Ruth, actually, I think you cut off uh, my favorite one. Uh, my hope is built on nothing much. Uh, I, I think you actually cut that off. Um, uh, pillow of ages, fluff for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of my personal favorites, I surrender some. Yeah, heard that. And uh, and and I tell you what. He leads me where I will consider following. Yeah, amen. Right? That's right, brother. Yep. And the one that it, that is so prevalent in our youth today, matter of fact, Christy, you might actually uh, want to get the youth group up at some point to do this one. Uh, blessed be the tie that doesn't cramp my style. <laughs> I really like that one. Um, my favorite one, though, and this is the last one, is Be Thou My Hobby. Yeah. How often today do we do that with God? Amen. How often today do we prioritize Him in a way that's not pleasing to Him? Right. How often do we put Him as an afterthought? Right. Isn't that terrible Amen. that we do that? Yep. We mention the church before we mention God. Yep. And without Christ giving Himself up for the church, there is no church. Right. <laughs> And I thought about it lately, and John 3.16 is, is, of course, what we use to, to bring people to Christ. It's, it's a, it is a verse that just clearly speaks to you. But then I thought about it, and I thought, you know what? What do we do with them after that? What do we do with them after that? What do we do with them once we've got them in the door? We talked this morning, Brother Ken, when he talked about Sunday school, he talked about a, a garden that we planted. Mm -mm. What about a garden where you plant seeds, but you don't tend to it? You don't put up a fence around it? You don't put a hedge of protection around it? You don't water it? You don't do anything to it? Well, there's so much disease and everything out there. Guess what happens to that? It never has time to take root. And it can't grow and bear fruit. Amen. That seed blows away in the wind. And Revelation 3.15 and 16 speaks to that. Because I tell you what, a lot of churches are failing in this department. 
We can't blame just the people sitting in the church. A lot of our churches are failing us today. And I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about any individual church. The church, we're unified. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, but we all have to be held accountable for what we do in His name. Revelation 3:15 and 16 says, "I know your works, that you're neither hot nor co- I'm sorry, that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth." Hmm. Those words are written in red, yeah. so that means they're very important. Yeah. That's the word of Jesus to the church of Laodicea in Revelation. And the church of Laodicea was a a church of the seven churches in Revelation. That was the letter that was written the most harsh. And that's why. Because today, I want you to think about lukewarm. I played sports. I played sports, and i got to tell you, when I got an injury of some sort... The doctor never did say, hey, go home and put a lukewarm pack on that. He didn't say that. He'd say alternate between cold and hot. That's what he would say. But guess what? Lukewarm literally means no value. If that's where you are in the middle of the road today, even sitting in the church today, if you're a spectator... (laughs) and not doing his work, Mm, he doesn't desire that. That, That's no benefit to him at all. You might as well not come. As a matter of fact, that's what he says right there. I would rather you be cold and turned off to me completely than to stand in the middle of the road and do nothing in my name. Because when we go out, if we go out into the world... And that's how we're living. That's what people see. And that's not an example for him. How are we bringing others into the, into the church? How are we growing the church? We can't because we're living the wrong way. We're lukewarm. I compare it, be thou my hobby. <laughs> I'll tell you what I compare that to. Brother Greg and I love Tennessee football. We love NASCAR, but it's a hobby. We don't live for it. Matter of fact, I don't mind going down to Neyland Stadium and filling a seat on football Saturday. Matter of fact, I love it. But I got to tell you, if that's what you're cheering for today, you missed the mark. You missed the mark. And that's what I want to talk about. There's a lot of things that we have done in the church today to make it more like that. We've actually done that with the church. And it's because the generation that's growing up today lives in such an entertainment-driven society that we're all looking for the next big thing to entertain them with. I actually had somebody say to me, I'm not going to name names, I would never do that, but I will tell you this. I actually had somebody that came to me in talking about numbers in the church and grow in the church and said, I'll do anything short of sin to bring them in the door. We have to look for different avenues to bring them in the door. No, we don't. No, we don't. That's filth and that's, that's blasphemy in itself. Because I'll tell you what the truth is. There's one way to bring them in the church and that's by talking about the name and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're not doing that, You're bringing them in for the wrong reason. What's going to happen? What's going to happen when you produce and direct your service? The Holy Spirit can't move about. Sitcoms are produced and directed. Things of the world are produced and directed. We don't have to have that in the church today. That's not necessary. You preach the name of Jesus and you lift it up. And that will bring them in the door. And if it doesn't, then they weren't hungry for it to begin with. 
But you know what? We can show them love through the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what will get them here. And then when we get them in the door, then we have to love on them. We have to love on our church. The church is not a building. There's a song that I love and it says, I'm working on a building for my Lord. We are the building. The people in the church are the church. But we've taken the things of the world today and we've creeped into the church. I actually heard somebody say last week, and I thought this was... They, they are in a big church, but they moved away from it. And they said, because what was happening was is that we were so focused on numbers, they actually brought a circus in to perform over Easter. Matter of fact, that was one of their hashtags on social media. Well, hashtag circus. Have we turned the church into that today? Because if we have, boy, we're sadly off the mark. How about hashtag Jesus before anything? How about that? How about the name of your Savior? And not as an afterthought. We can't do that to Him. What happens when you do that is that when you get such a big production, that's what people are coming for. They're coming for the sideshow. Jesus isn't a sideshow. He ain't a sideshow. He ain't that at all. <laughs> Matter of fact, I feel bad. I actually, I actually read a post from a girl that went to this service. And she said, well, what we learned, her takeaway from this service was that the crucifixion and the resurrection was the greatest show ever seen on this earth. Well, it was a show, but I'll tell you what it was. It was a show of love and of sacrifice. And anything else? Mm -mm. You don't need anything else. But have we become so lukewarm today that that's what it's about? We've numbed the name of Jesus. Isn't it bad when you can go into the church and get the same thing that you can get from the club? Think about that for a minute. Where's the reverence in that? Why would they bother coming to church when they can get the same thing out in the world? We have to make it different. And we have to make it reverent. We have to do that. As a matter of fact, you know, God speaks pretty clear to that in James 4.4. 4. He actually says adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Man, I wouldn't want somebody to say that about my church. I wouldn't want that. And I don't know, but you know what? Here's what I want to say about it this evening, and this is the biggest and most important thing. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And if they can't see that out in the world, they're not going to come and sit in this church. They're not going to do it. And that's what we need. We need more love. And we need the name of Jesus. When you tell me that you'll do something else to bring them in the door... What's going to end up happening is everything else is going to be a letdown for them. They're going to quit coming. The church is going to die. Now I hear it all the time, well the numbers don't lie. Sure they don't, right now. But what happens with the big productions? What happens with that? When they get tired and they don't see the next big thing. Let me tell you what, the next big thing in the church has already happened. You don't have to go out and find something to be the next big thing in church and to promote your church. You don't have to do that. The next big thing already happened. Jesus already came, He already died, and He's already risen and sitting at the right hand of the Father. And that's it. That's the next big thing. And if you get off of that, 
then you've lost your message and you've lost your way. Don't get so involved in numbers that we forget that each person sitting in here needs Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. And man, have we gotten far off of that. Hashtag circus. Hmm. Oh. If you compromise your beliefs for the world, then you've got one foot in faith and one foot in the world. You can't straddle the fence and be right with God. You can't do it. You got to be all or nothing, and that's what he tells you right there in Revelation 3:16. Be all or nothing. You're either surrendering all or you're surrendering some. <laughs> And He wants you to surrender all. Mm. Let's talk about numbers for a minute because i got to tell you, that hit me hard when I hear that. Numbers. Matthew 18, verses 12 through 14 says, What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep? We talked about sheep and the shepherds this morning. And one of them goes astray. Does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly, I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is, he who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Numbers do matter. One. One Jesus. And that's it. And one life right here. <laughs> I don't imagine that at the end of my life I'll get to heaven and uh, St. Peter's going to say something like, oh, I don't know. Uh, number one, uh, one billion, four million and one coming in. Mm -mm. The book of life says, uh, we're told that the book of life has my name in it. Not my number, my name. My name is written in that book. He knows my name and he knows your name if your name's in it. You are not a number to him. So why do we do that to the church today? It is so important. Are we losing that? Have we numbed ourselves? And here's what ends up happening to the average person that sits in a church like that. They only go to God when they have a problem. We talked about that today. They only turn to Him when they have a need. <laughs> First sermon I ever preached said, the Bible said it, that we are to give Him praise in everything. We're not just supposed to go to Him when we have a need. Have we ever thought, stopped to think that, you know what? We always say, what can God do for me? How can He make my life better? The better question tonight is how can you enrich the name of Jesus in His kingdom for His name? That's the question. Because I'll tell you what. And, and obedience to the Word of God. <laughs> Man, we've turned away from that too. We've compromised. We've compromised in the world today. Well, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, we're supposed to speak with boldness when we tell the truth. And the truth is in that book right there. And if you're speaking that, you're fine. God ordained it. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty understandable, isn't it? I mean, come on. But we're always looking to the next big thing. If we don't water the seeds that come into the church, they're going to blow away. They're not going to take root. <sighs> Man. Everything else is a letdown. When did it happen that the blood of Jesus wasn't enough? When did that happen? 
I'm not saying it's happened here, but I got to tell you, <laughs> it's happened out in the world, and that's crept into the church. Mm. And we compromise with the world because that's what's popular today. We give in. We give in. What would happen if Jesus had given in? I don't feel like going to the cross. I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like sacrificing my life for the sins of the world. What would happen if he had done that? You and I would be in a world of hurt this evening. Well, we got to get back to that. we got to get back to basics in the church. All over. we got to spread the name of Jesus, and it's got to be exalted above the name of the church, above our names. And Brother Greg said it this morning. We don't need gimmicks to bring Him in because what we do when we do that is we put Him on the same level as whatever we're using to bring them in the door. So they don't know the difference. Same thing. <laughs> Where's the reverence in that? We are supposed to put Him first. And not just that, but when, when you don't water the seed, these people think that they can just do good deeds and go to church. We can't be lukewarm in the church. That has no value. I want you to put it like this. Cold water, cold water will quench your thirst. Okay? You're not going to drink lukewarm water. That's gross. Doesn't do a thing for you either. Matter of fact, it makes me want something else. Right? It makes me want something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hot water. Well, we use it to cleanse. And we get on fire for the Lord, just like Brother Greg said this morning. We get on fire for Him. And then what happens? We go and we sit, and we don't put any further study into it. We don't do anything else. Guess what happens to hot water when it sits stagnant? It goes lukewarm. And God said, that's not of any value to me at all. I'd rather you turn away from me altogether. Because I can use that too. But I can't use you if you're standing right in the middle of the road. Hmm. Man. Hmm. Let's put it another way, cold and hot. Let's use another analogy. I like using analogies. I like that. Parables, as they're called in the Bible. But let's use it another way. Cold water, when it freezes, it does just that. It just freezes. It grows cold. Matter of fact, what do we call the cold in East Tennessee? We call it bitter cold. Don't we? We call it bitter cold. Man, it's bitter cold outside. If you've gone cold to the ways of God and talking about the name of Jesus, that's what's happened right there. You're bitter. They don't see love in you. They don't want to come in because they don't see it. They don't see the life that you're living for Christ. They don't see it. But you know what? Just like Brother Greg said with a poker this morning, <laughs> poke it a little bit. Poke the fire a little bit. All it takes to start a wildfire is a spark. That's it. A spark turns into a fire and if not contained, spreads everywhere. That's what we need to do with the name of Jesus tonight. And forever. Because let me tell you what, I've thought about this too and this is, this is just as important. If we're using something else other than Jesus to bring them in, that's something of the world. And guess what God says will happen to that? It'll go away. Eventually, that's going to fall away. It's going to die. But Jesus is eternal. That won't change. That won't change. And i got to tell you, it's really that simple. If we talk about a wildfire, though, during the burn, guess what happens? New growth happens. New growth. You get a burning right here, you start to grow. 
And you grow because you want to, you want to, you want to pick that up. You want to share His name. And you want to do it for no other reason than it brings joy in your heart. And when people see that, they want to grow with you. It's very easy for a man to walk out here and say, you know what, I've got it made. My life's great. I got a housekeeper and three houses and I got a wife with a girlfriend on the side and things are great. I'm good. And then you got the one sitting out here that says, well, uh, I don't really know how I'm going to pay the bills this month. And uh, I've got a doctor's appointment coming up and, and I don't really know how that's going to turn out. I've had that happen in my own life. And... Um, well, I'm just unsure about a lot of things. But then they say something that hits you. But you know the one thing that I'm very sure of? <laughs> I've got a friend in Jesus. And if you can have that kind of love and spread that kind of love, that'll grow like wildfire. And it takes off. And we don't have to put it in a box. It doesn't even have to be confined to four walls. It spreads everywhere. And man, that's what we need so bad today. We need it. We need a wildfire. We need revival right here. Brother Greg said it. It starts right there. That's where we've got to have it. It's got to start right here. Let's not make Him our hobby. Let's make Him our priority. I'll, I'll close with one last thought. And it's something that I've said to people before, two different things. Uh, somebody said to me, well, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? And there is no God, there's no Jesus, none of that really matters in the end. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. and, and I've said to the people like that, I've said, you know what, but if I die and I've got Christ and I'm wrong, I've lost nothing. But if you die, and you don't have Him, and you're wrong, you really don't have anything. You have no hope. You've got nothing. We have to get back to basics. That's how you grow, is with the basics. It's got to be watered. It's got to be fertilized. you got to do that. We got to go out and be the hands and feet. And we got to do it out of love and for nothing else. Jesus didn't <laughs> Jesus didn't walk down a road throwing out pieces of silver to get people to come follow him. <laughs> he didn't do that. He just showed them love. He showed a love that passed all understanding. And that made people want to follow. We don't need fans. We don't need to fill the seats just to fill the seats. We don't need fans. And boy, he don't want fans. Pick up your cross and go with me. He wants a follower. Have you made him a fan? Are, are you a fan? Have you turned him into a hobby? We're recording the message, so I, I want everybody that hears it to understand that don't be a fan be a follower that's what he desires and the closer you grow to him you'll draw other people in and guess what that does that makes them want to know what you've got and that's how we tell people about Jesus that's how we spread love There are two instruments that measure the temperature of an environment, the thermometer and the thermostat. The thermometer just reacts to the temperature of the environment. When the environment heats up, the thermometer goes up. When the environment cools down, the thermometer goes down. But then there's the thermostat. Unlike the thermometer, the thermostat doesn't just read the temperature of the room, 
it changes the temperature of the room. Thermometers are reactive. Thermostats are proactive. Some people are like thermometers. When it comes to the environmental temperature of the relationships in their life, they simply react to the changes. When a situation gets heated, they get heated. When a situation grows cold, they grow cold. Others, well, they're like thermostats. They don't change with the environment, they change the environment. When others are cold, they warm them up with love. When tempers are hot, they cool them down with peace beyond understanding. So the question is, which one are you? Are you reactive or proactive? Are you a thermometer or a thermostat? The Bible says, don't conform to the patterns of this world. In other words, don't be changed by your environment. Instead, be changed by God's transforming power. Then, like a supernatural thermostat, you won't just change the room, you'll change the world. Thank you.